This episode of In an Instant is powered by Wasabi. Get 15% off camera batteries with promo code INSTANT. Welcome to In an Instant. My name is Ben, and I come to you live and pre-recorded from Joshua Tree National Park, where we are celebrating a very, very special birthday. Lomography, a brand we know and love, has turned 30 years old. And today we're shooting around Joshua Tree and other famous locations in California with the lightweight, wide-angled Lomo LCA 120. This camera is very historically significant to Lomography, and it's part of their origin story. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that, take some pictures, and see what this sharp wide-angle lens can do. So without further ado, let's shoot. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. We'll be heading into the studio in just one second, but I thought what better way to open this episode than here at the historic Roy's Motel and Cafe on Route 66. This has been a destination I've been desperate to get to. I've spent weeks on Route 66, but never have ended up here. The fabled Roy's neon sign is unfortunately not lit up right now. I'm really glad I woke up at 4.30 a.m. to get here, but we still have some beautiful sunrise light that we're funneling into the 38 millimeter wide angle lens of the LCA 120. It goes to show how much I adore this camera that I brought my RB67, Polaroids, a bunch of toys to this special spot, and yet I've been mostly shooting with the LCA. That dramatic wide angle lens coupled with the prodigious nature of this Route 66 landmark has just felt right. I'm certainly putting a lot of trust in it, but that trust has been earned seeing the results I've gotten so far. So now let's hop into the studio to learn a little bit about why this camera has run ripples through the past, present, and future of Lomographic history. So today we're celebrating another anniversary with Lomography's 30th year of service to the analog lovers of planet Earth. It is with this 30th anniversary that Lomography has released special edition versions of the Lomo LCA, a foundational camera to the company, and one we'll be journeying with through the deserts of California and the lush greens of also California as, as well. They are the same camera bodies as the LCAs that Lomo continues to carry in the standard version, the 17 millimeter lensed LC wide and the LCA 120, which is the medium format edition that I've been bopping around with as I discussed in my episode on Lomo's latest creation, the 35 millimeter Lomo Apparat, the Lomo LCA is really the origin point from which the Lomographic movement sprung in the early 90s, and it's why they choose this model to commemorate their big anniversaries. As is fabled in Lomographic lore, back in 1991, Austrian students Wolfgang Stranziger and Matthias Feigl took a little trip abroad to Prague. While wandering the streets, probably blitzed out of their gourds, they felt the urge to document their bender on a real deal Soviet camera. Lomo хорошо знают у нас в стране и за рубежом, потому что она гарантирует точность, качество и надежность изделий. Wolfgang and Matthias wound up buying a secondhand Lomo LCA. This quirky point and shoot 35 millimeter camera was less than a decade old at the time, but was already out of production amidst the collapse of the USSR and everyone from Olympus to tomatoes producing point and shoot cameras that flooded the world with easy to use pocket poppers. The Leningrad Optical Mechanical Association, or LOMO, had been producing cameras and lenses since 1914, becoming a state run behemoth, crafting everything from Leica copies to Lubitels. Although the last century had thrown them every challenge known to mankind, they still remain in business today, manufacturing optical gear for astronomy, medical industries, and even cinema lenses. So Wolfgang and Matthias took their LCA around the recently liberated Prague and absolutely went dummy with the thing. They shot wild and free. And when they got their prints back, they quickly determined they loved the camera so much, they had to spread its gospel to all of Austria and beyond. Thus, they formed the Lomographic Society, buying up LCAs and shipping them around the world, peaking lo-fi iconoclasts with its contrasty lens, punchy color reproduction, and dreamy fall off. The plucky chaps weren't merely content, however, with flipping secondhand cameras. They'd gotten so deep into the Lomographic lifestyle that they boldly paraded their buns into Russia, approaching leadership at the Lomo factory about reviving the camera in lieu of their successful Lomography campaign. 
I can't imagine what was going through their heads as they approached the leadership of a fallen empire and local politician Vladimir Putin about bringing a point and shoot camera back to the market. Surely there were bigger fish to fry at the time, but by golly, these lads flashed puppy dog eyes so big, Lomo somehow agreed and revived production of the LCA in 1992. Though the road ahead was filled with kids crossing without looking both ways, Matthias and Wolfgang successfully kept the LCA spigot flowing from the Lomo factory to their entirely separate entity in Austria, Lomography, where they distributed a thousand LCAs a month through the 90s. After 13 years of this precarious arrangement, the Lomo factory regrettably ceased production of the camera in 2005, being unable to support such a small production line for Lomography. But these same cats who taught future war criminal Vlad Putin the Sunny 16 rule weren't going to let the LCAs pass away quietly surrounded by friends and family. They figured out a way to keep the gears ticking, exporting production to Asia. Coincidentally, this is the continent where the LCA was really produced in the first place. The Russian LCA was a clone of the Japanese Cosina CX-1. In 2005, the thrice revived LCA was ahead of its time and adding a plus to the moniker. And although you can't stream National Treasure on LCA+, the updated design incorporates new features like a multiple exposure switch, a broader ISO metering range, a threaded shutter for release cables, and ultimately new variations on the classic, like the LCA Wide, the LCA 120 for medium format film, and the now discontinued LCA Plus Instant, which shot Instax mini film. The current lineup also features a standalone LCA lens with a Leica M mount and adapters for modern mirrorless cameras. I love this lens as it's not only practically a body cap for my 35 millimeter camera, but brings the legendarily funky Minotaur one glass to cameras with precise range finders, which really allows you to get the most out of the optics. On the LCA camera lineup, there really isn't any sort of precision focusing tool. You rely on zone focusing using the distance guide, which features firm clicks at each zone. These cameras are otherwise fully automatic. You set the ISO and the internal meter determines shutter speed and aperture. On the standard LCA Plus, this aperture can open up to f2.8 and close down to f16, while on the 120 and the LC Wide, it tops out at f4.5. With shutter speed being automated as well, the viewfinder has a nifty LED system, lighting up once if you're good to shoot and revealing two lights if the shutter speed would be too slow for handheld use. But throw it on a tripod and the camera will do the thinking, producing sharp long exposures whenever the mood strikes. And you know that mood be striking. I was particularly interested in the LCA 120 because I shoot mostly medium format, but sometimes it can be a little cumbersome to manually meter everything and carry future family heirlooms around, especially when I'm traveling or need to stay light for an occasion. The first roll I shot on the LCA 120 absolutely slapped me silly, socked me sober. I took it to my beloved Starlight Motel as a side piece to burn a test roll through, but the results did not feel like a typical test roll for me. I was instantly struck by the bold color rendition of the optics, the contrast, basically all the stuff people yammer on about when they pray to the LCA. But I honestly hadn't seen that many results with the LCA 120 before, so the extra kick of medium format with the Minigon XL 38mm lens really sent me skyward. And in this mirror selfie, which, yeah, every, every test roll has a mirror selfie, you might notice the rangefinder I've got on the hot shoe. That is a Voigtlander rangefinder I always keep around for cameras that require scale focusing. Considering that medium format has a narrower cushion with depth of field, I've been wanting to take many chances with guesstimating zone focusing especially at the closer end of the one meter to two and a half meters area. So this has helped me more or less get critical focus on a majority of my shots, though I still miss if I get lazy. And since you can't control the aperture when it automatically opens to f4.5, even with a 38 millimeter lens, your plane of focus is still pretty narrow. So a combination of the rangefinder, the length of your arm, and any other focusing tricks you have in your bag will be pretty helpful. Gotta use the arm, you got a couple of them. On medium format, the 38 millimeter lens is equivalent to about 21 mil on 35, so it's really freaking wide. As a lover of wide lenses, this was a natural nuptial. The Minigon XL 38 millimeter might be compared to the Biogon 38 on the Hasselblad SWC. And while it's of course ridiculous to pit a Hassie against an LCA, it goes to show that this fellow six x six medium format shooter is a sharp Lomo option for someone wanting to have fun at that focal length without shelling you know, three grand or whatever. The immersion you can achieve with a focal length this wide on medium format is really interesting, and it took some practice to orient compositions knowing how much field of view will appear in frame. 
Foreground objects begin to play an epic role, and even compositions without dramatic foreground elements draw you inward with a rich vignette, chromatic aberrations, and subtle distortion. Or not so subtle in some people's opinion. As we are celebrating the lomography of it all, I've also brought along the Sprocket Rocket companion on these travels, which is similarly wide as heck and punches above its weight with form factor, function, and even the ability to do cool stuff like hours long exposures at night in bulb mode. These sorts of travel buddies are priceless for their propensity to perform admirably while staying immensely light on settings, dials, anything getting in the way of you and the subject. And that's the Lomographic way. And although you can't adjust much on the LCA, you can use exposure compensation by setting your ISO dial to the wrong film speed, tricking the meter into over or underexposing as you wish. The meter itself has worked massively well for me so far. I shot almost exclusively on Lomo 100, 400, and 800, which have a fair bit of exposure latitude. But even so, I was often in tricky, high contrast situations where I almost never got a dud. On this jaunt through Cali, I worked on a little series of pictures documenting the curious case of Christmas in California. As an East Coast blah, traveling through desert during Christmas time was wonderfully weird. Without snow or the typical touchstones of winter wonderlands, Californias have to create Christmas in the sand, and every wonky decoration or adornment caught my eye. I figured the quirks of the LCA lens would be a perfect fit for the quirks of Christmas in Cali, and I was super happy with how those characteristics aligned. And now it is time for the part of our show where we do pros and cons. Pros, LCA optics, both the Leica M mount Minotaur 1 and the Minigun XL on the 120 have delighted me with their character and sharpness. Portability, with a slimmer profile than even a Holga and the convenient way the camera opens and closes, the LCA is a massive overperformer for its size. And if a camera strikes you as something you might wanna bring around with you, it's probably the camera you're gonna use. The Minotaur 1 Leica M also gets a major shout out here for its ridiculously small footprint. Newness, this may seem like a silly pro, but it's not really so silly. The LCA cameras and lenses are manufactured in present day right now times, unlike most of our daily driver film cameras. Modern point and shoot cameras with auto exposure, a wide aperture range and impressive optical quality basically don't exist outside of what Lomography currently produces here. I'm always gonna be in the bag for Lomo because that's undeniably awesome and an important thing to have around in 2023 or whenever you're watching this. Shout out to 2057 squad. And cons, low light functionality. I have found this camera beyond easy to use in broad daylight or dusk, but I wish the ISO dial could go up to 3200 for lower light situations. I've been shooting Delta 3200 at 1600 to mixed effects, and although you can shoot at 1600 and push process to 3200, it's still a limiting factor where the automatic meter cannot give you a usable handheld shutter speed to work with. I have also had trouble syncing on camera flash with the hot shoe. It seems to work in theory, but the shutter drags unnecessarily long and the flash doesn't doesn't sync right away with the shutter button. I don't know, it could just be the gear I'm using, but that's not really exactly been so chill. Maybe a native, specially designed Lomo LCA flash would be a fun new product. Maybe, do it. And frame count. This is a potential issue I knew going in, but not every roll seems to precisely yield 12 frames on the LCA 120. Thankfully, the camera has no frame overlapping issues, but a bunch of my 12th frames were cut off. It's something I was kind of planning around, so I never got burned by it, but it's something to keep in mind. Well, folks, that about wraps it up for this journey into Lomo land. I, for one, am a proud Lomographer and I think it's just the bees, knees and elbows. What Lomography continues to pull off after all these years and all these changes to their consumer base, technology, digital entering the mix, the resurgence of analog, all of that. Chef's French kiss, I love you and I'm in love with you. And thank you for watching in an instant. Go ahead and check that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more reviews, breakdowns, shoots, and all things instant. Bye.